Okay, folks, welcome to uh, chapter 11, Gender Stratification. We are going to start on page about 310. And uh, this first lecture in this chapter is uh, largely going to review a couple of terms, and I'm going to talk about sex and gender and put this in the context as to um, what additional, I'm going to talk about these things this way first to kind of set the stage as to how I would like for you to start thinking about this in this chapter in the next, uh, for the next lecture and for the assignments that you're going to have for this week. So um, I'm going to move on over to the dry erase board to talk about a few things here. And uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to distinguish here between sex and gender, okay? So, um, sex is going to be biological. Right? And so when we think about gender, we're thinking about something that's more learned. Sex identity and gender identity are two different things, okay? Now, we have a tendency to think in our culture that because of your sex, then your gender identity is this way, okay? Now, Certainly in the last 10 years in the United States, we've seen changes in our understanding about not only sexual identity, but gender identity. Now, um, it's hard to separate sexuality from these. Okay? Uh, how do people express sex and how do people express gender in the form of sexuality? But these are three different terms, okay? Uh, we might get into this just a little bit, but the first thing that we want to do in uh, this short, short lecture is to talk about the differences between these two terms, okay? So, you know, we, we have an idea about what we mean about biological differences between males and females. Now, you're going to watch a video after this lecture that hopefully will give you a little bit of perspective as to how varied that... Uh, sex identity can be, okay? And hopefully that will shed a little bit of light into this understanding about what it means to be uh, male, female, and something beyond that, right? So if gender, uh, talking about gender being something that is learned, this goes back to socialization. And you start thinking about, well, how do we learn to be male or female, Okay. And so, um, what, what role, for example, and uh, let me erase this. Let me, let me show you something. So you think about gender. And, you know, if we start getting into the weeds on this a little bit. You can think about males and females. Now, if we were in face-to-face -face class, we would be having discussion on this, okay? Um, what does it mean to be male and female? Um, I'll just share with you all, when we have this discussion in my classes, a lot of times we'll talk about gender roles and what are the expectations of being male and being female. And a lot of times I hear this in the last several years, when we have these discussions in class, we say, okay, if you think about the average male, the average female, what are the expectations of being male or being female? When you're, for males, you have to be the breadwinner. Uh, you have to be, uh, exhibit um, behaviors of authority. Um, you have to not cry. You have to... Uh, be more of the hands-on kind of a person. And then we talk about, well, what are the expectations of being female? And again, this I'm just sharing with, with you what students have told me in the past. And that, they'll also will say that, well, these are changing, and they have changed. And it doesn't mean that everybody has to be this way, but if you think about what the norm is, the expectation around these things, right? So women are the nurturer. 
They are more emotional. Uh, they are the housewife. They take care of things and that sort of thing. Okay, so as you think about gender roles, what it means to be male or female, the expectations, where do those come from? And so this goes back to socialization. We can think about how important our, our lives are from birth until we start to develop a sense of identity of these things. What goes on from the time you're born until, you know, when do you know what it means to be male or female? Middle school? New, uh, um, I was going to say new parish, but in elementary school? And what role do significant others... Who are the oops? Who are significant others? Those might be uh, parents, maybe siblings, maybe extended family. Oh, she's so cute, or oh, he's such a boy, or she's a tomboy, or whatever, right? So, how do significant others? socialize us into our gender and as a parent where do I get my understanding about what it means to be male or female from my experience right and so I'm passing on expectations from culture to my children for example so not only is it when we talk about ages of socialization right it's not only family and parents um, we also can think about the generalized other. You know, what messages do we receive in society at large? How do the media influence this? So these, again, are agents of socialization. Media could be mass or social media. Uh, I know some of you have younger brothers and sisters that might be in elementary school or middle school. How is social media influencing them in terms of who they're supposed to be regarding males or females. There's a lot of bullying that takes place now because our society has not done a very good job of helping young people to better understand how to interact with people on social media and what's expected not to happen on social media. So, you know, this is going back to thinking also about sexuality, right? So we, we are going to get into some of that uh, probably the next lecture. So some other uh, agents of socialization, family, media, we'll put school right here. And yes, I'm kind of moving up the ladder of significant others and generalized other. School and parents are closer to being significant others. Teachers, of course, friends, we'll put friends, peers right here. Those are the agents of socialization. How do they influence our understanding of what it means to be male or female? Okay? So, as a learned behavior. So, I'm going to stop this uh, early, short presentation in this chapter. And uh, we are, I'm going to ask you to watch a video. That's going to be the second assignment. You'll see, you'll see that listed in... Uh, the week, uh, the this week's work, and um, let me know if you have any questions. And again, these lectures are going to build on one another. So the next uh, couple of lectures, we'll build on this one, and we'll also build on. Um, hold on a second, and we'll also build on. Um, the assignments and that sort of thing. Okay, so thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Peace.